What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Momentous Living. My name's Kevin. And last week, I made a little video and I said, what exactly is it that, that you guys want to hear? What are some topics that... I don't know, you just, it comes up in your mind. You might see it's a hot topic. Maybe it's just out of curiosity or experience. And I got, I got some really good, uh, some really good, um, uh, feedback. And there's, there was two that really resonated with me. Uh, I might be biased, but, uh, for today, what we're going to talk about is the question of why is it that keto works so well? Except when I stop, I get fat again. So to discuss this, we really want to break down a couple of key things. And that's what we're going to try and do today. We're going to try and touch on a little bit of the science, touch on a little bit of maybe some nuanced topics when it comes to these type of things. But one thing I want to just say, and I just want to put it out there, is that I notice very often when it comes to diets, people seem to be very sensitive. Like it's very... It's very interesting. It's it's almost like um, it's almost like it's it's politics, right? And I think before I get into this, I just want to I just want to urge everyone that whenever we're talking about something sensitive, like like what we eat, let's approach this with an open mind. We don't we don't when it comes to nutrition, we don't know everything. And there's nothing wrong with trying. I think it's wrong when one side is like, this is the way it needs to be. And then all of a sudden, the other side is like, no, this is the way it needs to be. We need to be a little bit more kind with each other and understand that whenever we touch on a topic like this, it's not malicious. We're not trying to necessarily force anyone to do something. But if it could benefit people if it could really help them out of a slump, if it could help them through something that they're going through in their life, well, I don't see anything wrong with that. So let's have an open mind and let's get into this. So have you ever wondered why keto diet seems to work so well for fat loss, uh, mental clarity, overall health, and basically just a very useful thing? Now, when I say keto, what I'm talking about essentially is just really low carbs to basically non-existent because what we're trying to do is we're going to try and get the body to get into a state where it uses a lot of things called ketones. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, enhanced fat oxidation and ketone utilization. So let's start with the fat oxidation. When you drop carb intake, your body switches gears from burning sugar to burning fat. So just in that sentence, I'm pretty sure that most of us could be like, that sounds good. That sounds good. Sign me up, please. Now, this process, like I just said, or like I mentioned before, this process is called fat oxidation. Your liver also starts producing ketones, which are an efficient fuel source for your brain and your muscles. This metabolic switch is controlled by something called AMPK. Now, as I said, I don't want this to be too sciencey, but if I had to explain what AMPK is, is it's this, this type of energy sensor. And it gets activated when your energy is low. It helps create more mitochondria. Now, if you don't really know what mitochondria is, or you have absolutely no idea what mitochondria is, we could think of it as this, uh, these tiny little factories inside our cells that turn nutrients into usable energy. This basically boosts our body's ability to burn fat. It, it, the, the mitochondria, little, these little factories do way more than just that, but... The more we have, the more healthy mitochondria have, typically the better. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is appetite suppression. One of the most powerful benefits of keto is how it reduces hunger. Now, ketones, specifically beta-hydroxybutyrate, help lower levels of ghrelin and support increases of satiety signals like 
uh, cholecystokinin, uh, often report, um, referred to as uh, CCK, uh, peptide YY, so we obviously, not obviously, uh, definitely not obviously, but uh, peptide YY we refer to um, often as PYY, and then the infamous GLP-1. These days, we talk about GLP-1 when we're talking about Ozempic. So, the results, you feel fuller, longer, and you naturally eat less without trying to eat less. So let's go over that again. So what happens is when we're utilizing ketones, specifically beta-hydroxybutyrate, it ends up doing this thing where all of a sudden it lowers one thing, and that lowering the levels of this thing called ghrelin helps us because ghrelin signals to our body that mm, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And for me, when I think of ghrelin, I think of like a gremlin, right? Like whenever we're hungry, we become like a gremlin. Maybe that's just me. Anyways, so it lowers that so you don't feel as hungry. And then it supports the increase of those satiety, sig those satiety signals. Like I said, CCK, PYY, and the infamous GLP-1. Uh, don't worry, at the end of this, I'll put uh, down there um, a bunch of studies that you could go refer to if you want to geek out a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is improved insulin sensitivity. I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to insulin. I really like this topic of, of this specific hormone. It's I just find it so interesting. It could allow us to really, I wouldn't, I always want to kind of say biohack, but it's really not that. It's just that if we could really understand the topic of insulin, we could have a, an overall easier time in life. So now let's talk insulin. A keto diet helps reduce how much insulin your body needs to release. Lower insulin means better sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity is a good thing. So think about this. If you're somebody who drinks coffee all, all the time, every morning, maybe a couple cups a day, What's going to happen is that you know that you have a better tolerance to coffee. But instead of saying tolerance, let's say we are more resistant to its effect. And I'm sure you could agree with me. And if you don't drink coffee for, let's say, 40 days, and then all of a sudden you go and have a little bit of an espresso, then you might feel its effects, its effects intensely. That would be a sensitivity to caffeine. So keeping that in mind, we could see if we don't have a lot of insulin that's constantly being secreted, how our cells can become more sensitive. And that's really important because it's a side topic, but that's really important because we don't want our blood sugar levels high. This is where we're going to start talking about ty uh, diabetes, type 1 and 2. So your body becomes, with the insulin sensitivity increasing because of the keto diet, your body becomes more efficient at using glucose when needed and less prone to storing fat. And I'm pretty sure that you could guess where that leads to. It also lowers the amount of sugar your liver ends up pumping out through a process called gluconeogenesis. I don't want to get too sciencey, but let's just say with fewer carbs and less demand for glucose, this process will slow down, helping stabilize blood sugar levels. And when we have a stabilized blood sugar level, we tend to not feel any high highs or any crashes. And this could really lend itself to mental clarity. I could attest to this for sure. Now, there's a topic that I wasn't sure if I was going to mention, but it's, I find it very interesting. And this topic is the topic of inflammation. Reduced inflammation. That's, I think that's a massive topic because if we have a reduction in inflammation, unwanted inflammation, this overall will make us feel better. We'll be able to move better. We'll be able to think better, less aches and pains. It, it could lead to other things like skin conditions could go, could, uh, get, get better or remain no, no flare-ups is what the word I'm looking for. And chronic things, even like a rheumatoid arthritis. When it comes to inflammation, 
my brain just wants to go talk about that, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to briefly talk about the reduced inflammation as a correlation to the ketones. So here's something most people don't know. Ketones are an anti-inflammatory. So there was that one that we mentioned before, beta hydro, beta hydroxybutyrate. Beta hydroxybutyrate can block uh, something called NLRP3 inflammasome, a key driver of chronic inflammation. So if somebody has something like, let's say, rheumatoid arthritis, we could see, often referred to as RA, we could see how all of a sudden this could potentially be a game changer. This is huge if you're dealing with autoimmune or neurological issues or just want to feel better overall. Like I said, go down, down below to check out some studies if you really want to geek out, like I just mentioned before. So that reduction in inflammation, I believe, could help to overall weight loss because all of a sudden, if you're feeling better, you may start moving a little bit more. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is body composition and fat loss. This, this is a topic that I, th I don't think it's, it's so clear cut, but when we're going keto, when we're doing a keto diet, keto helps you lose fat while preserving muscle technically, especially if you're doing resistance training, which has a whole amazing effect on muscle protein synthesis, especially because of the resistance training compounded with the fact that you're probably getting in way more protein than usual. Lower insulin and higher uh, norepinephrine levels mean your body is primed to break down fat and not muscle. So these little mechanisms along with the muscle protein synthesis because of the food that's coming in along with if you're resistance training so that's going to increase muscle protein synthesis this really helps the body kind of like i said break down that fat and overall feel good and strong so i'll leave you with this to conclude whether it's fat loss appetite control insulin health, or inflammation, keto works because it aligns with your body's natural system. I know that these topics could be a little bit hard to digest. I know that it's, it's tough to get behind something that seems very drastic. But sometimes life throws us curveballs and we need to find a way to regain control. And a diet like the keto diet or a very low carb diet or the carnivore diet like the last video I had or one of the last videos that I had done. These type of diets really do work and they really do allow us to regain control, be it from a chronic illness, be it from the weight loss, which was the original question, or mental clarity. It allows control. And then from there, if you want to start to have a little bit more carbs, you can slowly integrate them into your system. Or you can just throw the whole keto diet out and go back to eating the way you did. And you'll probably feel the difference. Be open-minded. As I started this convo with everybody, be open-minded. Understand that people are just trying to do the best they can and deal with certain unfortunate things in their life. All right? So for now... That's it. Don't forget, subscribe, like, comment, all those beautiful things that could help the algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for lending me your ear or your eyes, depending on how you're listening to this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.